Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you all for coming and contributing to the discussion. Uh, it is one of the most fascinating subjects when you think of it, of what is sustainable business, and we have kind of extreme traditions, one from sort of worrying about how not to inflict damage on the uh, planet, the society, or going further, how to improve things, to uh, with the current crisis, uh, how to survive, right? So here sustainability is a sort of sheer survival for many. Uh, and, uh, and I think all the broader issues that were mentioned here are actually really the way to, uh, to think about it. Uh, what I'd like to, uh, in the few minutes I have, to focus on is that uh, maybe one should sort of think about it as a sensible deviation from the paradigm we had, which I will as a shorthand say sort of simple profit maximization. You know, to the extent that business uh, is about maximizing profit in some perspective, how do we sensibly go beyond that? And I think that's what people really mean when they, when they talk about it. How do you harness innovation for social welfare? These are the kinds of issues that, that come with it. And, um, and I think that the um, um, economic and environmental dimension that's traditionally involved can be merged together. And uh, uh, the question is, how do we achieve this pursuit, increased pursuit of a more global, broader, sensible goal in a world that's increasingly more competitive? So in some sense, we're moving into a world where the emphasis on what would be called the bottom line, profitability, is more and more uh, prevalent. And yet we're trying to achieve something that's broader and at first sight uh, seemingly incompatible. Right? So I will take the uh, insurmountable task of arguing that this actually can be done. That in some sense having markets, and uh, markets can be extremely helpful, that we just have to use them in a way that's uh, sensible for the achievement of this goal. So how do we uh, make it? How do we do it? I'll just throw out a few things for, for discussion. I would say the first step is education, emphasis on education. And I'm supplementing what others have said. So I'm not trying to say that what they said is not sensible. On the contrary, I actually agree with what they said. So what I'm saying here is I'm selecting things that will supplement it for the sake of our discussion. So I think if you educate people, they clearly will see broader than just a very narrow perception. Consumers will value more environment and broader goals. Uh, people who determine what businesses are doing will appreciate broader perspectives. Uh, those who dictate to business leaders what to do, namely shareholders or their representatives, will also have a broader perspective. So I think that's important. It's just sort of increase the consciousness, conscientize people about a broader welfare measure than just simply profit. Second complementary to it is regulation. How do we have positive rather than negative regulation? You know, traditionally, the problem is that very often regulation is very burdensome. So how do we make the regulation be such that it's enforcing and reinforcing the positive aspects? And I think that's, that's really important, going from bad to good. And the third aspect that I would put to it is uh, incentives, or if you want an economic jargon, shadow prices. How do we, in some sense, move people, nudge them, in a direction where they will take into account the reality as it's there, stark, but add something to it. And so, for instance, for things that are uh, green in some sense, we put a different price implicitly, the shadow price. We say this has some other positive value that we will stress. Those that have negative uh, deleterious effects, we put uh, lower value to. So we can really, through this adjusted pricing, actually move using the market system using positive government influence uh, move quite a long way. Properly pricing infrastructure projects, which are of long-term duration, are very hard to uh, conceptualize, even in very traditional concept, context, and to do it so better you know, in the long run. Uh, research subsidies. You know, very often, the word subsidy has a negative connotation, but it's certain areas where you have long-term, dynamic, intertemporal uh, view. This can be uh, dramatically positive. So all these things sort of lead me back to what the previous speakers were saying, and namely that what we need in some sense is to complement, uh, not to throw out, but complement what we have, the good things, with increased coordination, collaboration, peace. Uh, all these things come together, taking into account the long-term factors, and Petr correctly pointed out, demographic factors are a primary example of this intergenerational, intertemporal aspect that we have to take into account, and we really don't. And I think that if we start the discussion along those dimensions, that we can actually make a lot of progress, uh, not solve everything absolutely, but make a lot of progress in a relatively short period of time. 